वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट पी एन जंक्शन डायोड एंड द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ डिप्लीशन लेर इन टू इट वी अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज फॉरवर्ड बायसिंग एंड द रिवर्स बायसिंग द डायोड बेसिकली शोज आर एक्टिफाइंग बिहेवियर एंड विद ऑल दीज थिंग्स नाउ इन टू डेज लेक्चर आई विल टॉक अबाउट मेटल सेमी कंडक्टर कॉन्टैक्ट okay because it is similar to the semiconductor semiconductor contact so uh, i will begin with the definition of a work function as per your course so if you look at this uh, i will show you the next transparency just a minute okay it's coming so it is the we will define what is the work function in metal you must have studied about work function uh, in case of metal it is the amount of energy given to the electrons in the metal to escape from the surface this is called basically the work function so metals are if we talk in terms of the energy band diagram the metals are characterized by an incomplete energy band balance band and the conduction band superimpose one over other there is nothing like band gap in case of metals and the highest field energy state is the fermi level and the energy corresponding to it is called fermi energy so fermi energy ef is the maximum energy which the electron can have in a solid at 0 degree kelvin the minimum amount of energy imparted to an electron having maximum energy at 0 degree kelvin to enable it to overcome the potential energy barrier at the surface and escape into the vacuum from the surface is called it is called work function so here in this discussion the reference level is nothing but basically the vacuum level vacuum level is the one where uh, in fact it is it has overcome the potential energy barrier of the metal so if you look at the free energy uh, in fact energy level diagram for the metal and the semiconductor both so here on this side we have basically the fermi level all the states below the fermi level are completely filled and all the states above the fermi level are completely empty the top most level is the reference level or the vacuum level and the distance of fermi level from the vacuum level is basically the uh, work function of a metal and here it is denoted by phi m similarly coming to now n type semiconductor uh, there are two terms you can see here you already know that eb is the uh, top of the valency band ec is the top is the bottom of the conduction band and ef is the fermi level that in case of n type semiconductor is close to the conduction band here again the separation of fermi level to the vacuum reference level is called a work function of the semiconductor and similarly there is one more term that is called electron affinity electron affinity of a semiconducting material is the separation between the vacuum level and the conduction band energy here are some of the examples of uh, the work function i have already told you about metal work function semiconductor work function and electron affinity so these numbers are in case of a uh, silver Uh, it is 4.26 electron volt for aluminium it is 4.28 electron volt for gold it's 5.1 electron volt and for molybdenum it is 4.6 electron volt so these are some of the example of work function of the metals similarly coming to the electron affinity side germanium has a electron affinity of 4.13 silicon has an electron affinity of 4.01 and similarly gallium arsenide is also a most uh, uh mostly used the semiconductor that is a uh, that has a uh, uh electron affinity 4.07 electron volt please don't confuse with the work function when a metal and the semiconductor so what we are going to understand in today's uh, lecture that when a metal and the semiconductor that is n type are brought in contact with each other then there are two types of junction which are formed depending upon the work function of the semiconductor and its relation with the metal okay so we will talk about two types of uh, contacts so one is called schottky junction 
are rectifying contact. This is the possibility for n-type semiconductor when the work function for the metal is larger than the work function for the semiconductor. Then it is called a rectifying contact. Similarly, uh, we have another type of contact that is called ohmic contact or ohmic junction when the work function of the metal is less than that of the semiconductor work function. So we will try to understand the basic difference between, between these two types of contact. One is rectifying or short key junction and other is non-rectifying and we also call it as a ohmic junction. If you look at uh, the energy level diagram again, when uh, this is basically the energy level diagram of a short key junction between the metal and n type semiconductor before contact. Uh, so if they are not in contact, then what will happen? Phi m here is larger than phi s. The work function for the metal is larger than the work function of the semiconductor. So you can see on two sides, the Fermi level of uh, electrons in case of n type semiconductor is at the higher energy than the Fermi energy in case of metal. So there are different ways of understanding it. One is Fermi energy is higher. So what will happen? The electrons from the conduction band will move towards the metal. So when they move towards the metal, there is a deficiency or a, there is a, uh, in fact, uh, what will happen in this case, just a minute, I, in fact, uh, I, it has gone. So I'll come here now. So you can see here when the electron move from semiconductor to the metal. So on the metal side, we have negatively charged electrons and on to the semiconductor side, what we are left with is the positively charged donor impurities. So this region is called depletion region on the similar ground as in case of PN, PN junction. So here we have a metal. In metal, there is no depletion region. So depletion region is basically in the n-type semiconductor only. And this n-type semiconductor has basically both the mobile and immobile carriers because these are immobile carriers because their mass is much, much larger. The other way of understanding, in fact, the whole thing, the other way of understanding the same thing is that we have the Fermi label at different distances. Here, when this happens, okay, so there will be an electric field. The direction of the electric field will be from positive to the negative charge. So this electric field will give rise to a contact potential that has been denoted here to be equal to B0. It is similar to the barrier potential in case of PN junction. The other way of understanding the same thing is on the basis of, again, Fermi level. Uh, Fermi level on the n-type semiconductor, the Fermi level has the higher energy to the Fermi level on the metal side. So when they are put in contact with each other, what will happen? The electron transfer takes place from n-type semiconductor to the metal till the Fermi level comes in the same line or they are line up. So in thermal equilibrium, the thermal in, in thermal equilibrium, the Fermi level of the semiconductor will basically line up with the Fermi level of metal. Okay, so you can see this diagram and it is because the electric field is basically from positive to negative. So you see that these bands basically bend up upward. So this bending will be basically common in the in the depletion region or in the space recharge region only and uh, you see here in the bulk they are same they are unaffected or they are same as earlier you can see here some barrier is created this barrier eb0 b0 is called barrier potential or contact potential similar to the one that we just explained on the basis of basically transfer of electrons so this B0 is called barrier potential. B0 is uh, the difference of work function of the metal and the work function of a semiconductor. Here, when they line up, this is basically the barrier potential for the metal and this is the barrier potential for the semiconductor. If you look at this junction in, uh, in thermal equilibrium, now because of the barrier, you see that if the electrons wants to move from N type to P side, they have this barrier because unless and until we supplement the energy to be equal to EB0, they will not be able to move from N type to N type to metal side. 
Similarly, if you look at the electrons here on the metal side, there is a barrier equal to pi b unless and only these electrons are having maximum energy to be equal to Fermi energy. They are given an energy to equal to pi b. They will not be able to move from the metal side to the semiconductor side, and the net effect will be net effect will be that uh, the current in thermal equilibrium will be equal to zero. So uh, whatever I have explained, in fact, all these things are written over here. The electrons of conduction band of semiconductor, SC, normally I write it for semiconductor. Please don't take it otherwise. Okay, we'll move to empty energy states above the Fermi level of the metal. This leaves behind the positive charge on the semiconductor and, and due excess electron in negative charge on the metal side leading to a contact potential. But if we talk in terms of uh, the Fermi level, then when the short key junction is formed, then the Fermi levels line up and a positive potential is formed on the semiconductor side because depletion layer extends within a certain depth in the semiconductor. There is a bending of bands on the semiconductor side. Bands bend up in the direction of the electric field from positive to the negative. So that is why they bend up. And as I explained you using the energy level diagram in the previous page, this EB0 is given by phi m minus phi 0. This is the barrier energy seen by the electron moving from semiconductor to the metal side. Similarly, the short key barrier which is created between the metal and semiconductor has a barrier potential to be equal to phi b for the electrons uh, electrons desirous of moving from metal to the semiconductor. So in equilibrium, as I explained to you, there is no current. Short key junction can be biased by an external potential similar to the forward biasing and the reverse biasing explained to all of you while explaining you the PN junction. In forward biasing here, if the metal is connected to the positive end and the semiconductor is connected to the negative end, it is forward bias. So the net effect of this forward bias is that once we apply a positive terminal of a battery to the metal side and negative end of a terminal to the semiconductor side, the barrier is lowered. And because of the lowering of barrier, it is easier for the electrons to move from N type to basically the metal and the current flows with increase in voltage. Now coming to the reverse bias side, when the metal is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the semiconductor to the positive terminal of a battery, what happens is that the barrier becomes more because that reverse bias voltage gets added to the barrier voltage. It becomes difficult for the carriers to move from one side to another. So therefore, the current is very laser. That is the reason why we call it as rectifying behavior. Rectifying means you forward biases, current will pass through a junction. You reverse bias it, current will not pass through a junction. This is called rectification. Rectification means, uh, in fact, if we talk in terms of AC, then during the positive half cycle, the current will pass through. During the negative half cycle, the current will not pass through. Uh, if you look at the current voltage diagram of a short key diode, short key diode is nothing but the metal semiconductor rectifying diode or rectifying contact. Uh, it follows a similar equation to that of PN junction diode. In forward biasing, the current increases exponentially. However, on the reverse bias side, the current is very small. In fact, when you are there in the lab, the forward bias current is of the order of milliampere, while we get a current of the order of microampere in the reverse bias, reverse bias junction. So I is equal to I0 e to the power of EV over KT minus 1. I0 here is a constant quantity and it depends upon phi B. Phi B is basically the barrier potential for the metal of the system. And this I0 is a constant. It follows basically an equation I0 AT square e to the power of minus phi B over KT. This A here is called Richardson constant. Basically, this equation is also called Richardson equation. So the constant is uh, depends upon the Richardson constant and it has a similar behavior as that of PN junction. Then we have uh, then short key diode as I explained to you. This short key junction or short key diode or short key contact behaves as a rectifier. 
now coming to the other side of the story that suppose we have a metal whose work function is less than phi s now we try to understand the non rectifying junction or ohmic junction so if it is ohmic junction ohmic junction means non rectifying that is what we have to understand that why a ohmic junction where the work function of a metal is less than the work function of a semiconductor for n type semiconductor it is a ohmic junction so you again look at the energy level diagram here you can see in the figure this is basically the reference level the value of phi s or the work function for the n type semiconductor is larger than the work function for the metal so here what will happen since uh, the metal fermi level is at the higher energy level so the transfer of electron you can see this arrow the transfer of electrons will take place from the metal to the semiconductor side so electrons move from metal to the empty states of the conduction band so that there is an accumulation of electron on the semiconductor side this accumulation region has a higher conductivity than bulk of a semiconductor because you have a semiconducting material it has some conductivity when the transfer of electron takes place from the metal to the semiconductor side so within this region we call it as basically the accumulation region in case of a rectifying contact we call it as depletion region but here we call it as accumulation region so in the accumulation region this has a higher conductivity than that of the bulk of a semiconductor bulk means inside the semiconductor is called bulk normally we make use of two terms one is bulk and other is surface surface ka matlab uski satah ke upar bulk ka matlab uske andar so whenever we make a contact so the region close to the metal semiconductor contacts becomes more conducting as compared to the bulk if you look at the energy level diagram as i explained you earlier that now the transfer of electrons will take place from metal to semiconductor till the labeling or line up or equalization of fermi level on the two side takes place because in thermal equilibrium what will happen the fermi level of the two metals in contact or two semiconductors in contact or one metal and one semiconductor in contact will will line up so same thing you can see here now but the bands will bend in the downward so when the band bends downward you can see there is nothing like barrier there is no barrier there is a accumulation region which is more conducting so thus the ohmic junction behaves as a register conducting in both forward and reverse in fact if you apply a positive voltage to the metal side and negative voltage to the semiconductor side are the reverse of this that means negative to the metal side and positive to the uh, to the semiconductor side you will see this barrier will change but this barrier will not affect basically the movement of carriers moving from one side to another so that is why we call it as ohmic junction ohmic junction is very important uh, basically in semiconductor uh, electronics because suppose you talk about the pn junction in a lab in your lab you are given a pn junction so pn junction in the lab also or even if you procure a pn junction from the market you will not be able to see the pn junction that is in between what you have is basically you have two metallic legs one on n side and other on p side so they are nothing but basically the metal semiconductor contacts and if they are rectifying so obviously then our pn junction behavior cannot be understood so they have to have ohmic contacts then only we can understand basically the rectifying behavior of a pn junction that is why understanding the ohmic and the rectifying behavior of a metal semiconductor contact is very important a uh, metal semiconductor contact there here are some examples that if we have germanium and the silicon these are normally the metals are the alloys aluminum gold silver aluminum titanium nitride these are the alloys are the metals which are exploited exploited basically to make a, a non rectifying or ohmic junction because ohmic junction ohmic contact between a metal and semiconductor is a junction across which no barrier potential difference exists for the flow of electron in either direction for a n type material and similarly for a hole in 
either direction for a p-type material. So this is very important to visualize and understand the difference between the ohmic contact and uh, the rectifying contact. Similarly, for uh, the metal and p-type semiconductor, the things will be reversed. Here, in fact, if you have the work function of the metals larger than the semiconductor work function, then the contact will be ohmic. And similarly, if the work function is of a metal is less than the work function of semiconductor, then it is rectifying. So without going into the detail, since I have already uh, explained you in detail about the behavior of metal and n-type semiconductor contact, both for uh, rectifying and non-rectifying. Non-rectifying is ohmic, rectifying is short key barrier. Short key is basically the name of a physicist who basically developed this type of his structures. Uh, so here again, you can see that uh, the first case here is you have phi m to be larger than phi s. So again, what will happen? The transfer of holes will take place from this side to this side because the Fermi level here is the larger place. So again, the labels will bend upward and therefore there will not be any barrier in this case. So since there is no barrier, so either you apply a forward biasing or you apply a reverse biasing, it hardly makes any difference. And the, and the resistance offered by a junction is independent of the voltage applied. The other is rectifying contact or short key contact. So in case of short key contact, for a p-type semiconductor, here you can see it's a p-type semiconductor. I have written it ECP. ECP is conduction band bottom of p-type semiconductor. EFP is Fermi level of p-type semiconductor. And similarly, the top of the valency band for p-type semiconductor. So here, this is the second case where the work function of the metal is less than the work function of a semiconductor. So again, if you uh, look from the point of view of Fermi label, so in thermal equilibrium, the Fermi label will line up and once they line up, so they will give rise to, because they will bend down, so they will give rise to now a barrier. You can see here, this barrier, the basically the holes here uh, will have to gain this much of energy to come to this side. So that is why it is again not possible in thermal equilibrium. There will not be any current in case of a short key junction. If you apply a forward biasing, the barrier will be lowered, making the carriers to be easy to move from one side to another. And similarly, if you apply a reverse biasing, you are making the carriers to move our carrier movement more difficult to move from one side to another and this junction this rectifying junction so here the barrier will be lowered while forward devising and the barrier will be barrier will increase while reverse biasing so there will be a current through the junction in forward biasing and there will not be a current in a, through a junction in the reverse biasing that is why we call it as a rectifying contact so this is all about, so this was a, the complete lecture on metal semiconductor context. You all have to draw the energy level diagram in your copy. You have to understand why the Fermi labels are basically lined up in thermal equilibrium and how does Fermi label moves with increase of forward bias voltage and the reverse bias voltage. Because this way it will be easier for you to understand basically the transistor also because transistor has two contacts. So things as you move further, the things will become more and more difficult. So it's better to understand the concept of energy level diagram. In fact, you can understand it without energy level diagram also. But if you understand energy level diagram, it will be easier for you to understand basic physics related with some of the devices. So that is where I will stop for these contexts in the next lecture we will move further thank you so much